Hi everyone, welcome to your course, Chemistry for Engineers Laboratory. This is your instructor, Engineer Janaika A. Tapiador. Today, you will be performing a simulation of your experiment number 6, which is entitled Determination of Dissolved Oxygen in Water. As with any other uh, ex simulation experiments that we had, I will be providing you a link that will prompt you to the site of the activity. So here, it will first prompt you to the objective or the aim of the experiment, which is to estimate dissolved oxygen level in the given water sample using your Winkler's method. And after reading the aim, so you can see it here on the upper right side of your screen. You have your aim, theory, pre-test, procedure, simulation, post-test, and references. So click on theory. Uh, this will show you a short theoretical discussion about the activity that you will be doing. And I encourage you to please read through this as uh, it will actually show you how important dissolved oxygen is uh, in a sample of water. So, I need the introduction, significance, and what is Winkler's method. So, please make sure that you read this. Anyway, it's very short in the month. Then, after reading it, you go now to the simulation. So, clicking on that will prompt you to this particular page. So, determination of dissolved oxygen in water, of course, the objective to estimate the O level in the given water sampler by Winkler's method. A DO is just a short-term use for your dissolved oxygen. So, these are the apparatus that we will be using. So, you have your BOD bottles, your pipette, conical flask, burette, beaker, dropper, spatula, and other miscellaneous uh, apparatus. So click on this particular button to let you proceed to the next phase. So the first part of this activity is for you to standardize your sodium thiosulfate solution. So fill a burette with sodium thiosulfate solution. Click on this funnel. And then, of course, remove the cap of the sodium thiosulfate solution. And you fill this particular burette until the initial reading there. Hanggang sa light na yun. Of course, once it's completely filled, you are to replace the cap of your sodium thiosulfate solution and remove the funnel. Once you've already performed that, click on the next button. And here, it says, take 10 ml of your 0 0.025 potassium dichromate solution in a conical flask. So, of course, you remove the cap. And this is a pipette that you use to transfer a small amount of liquid from one, um, one bottle onto another. So, click on that. As you will see there an arrow going up, so click on the uh, arrow going up. And when you want to pour now the content of this liquid to another bottle, you click on the uh, arrow going down. Of course, replace the cap of the solution and click on next. So add 2 ml of hydrochloric acid and 1 spatula of your potassium iodide powder to the same conical flask. Uh, the one that uh, he or she is holding is what we call a micro pipe. So this is for just very small amount of liquid. So of course you click on it. And remove the cap of the hydrochloric acid. Take out 2 ml as indicated in the instruction. Replace the cap of the hydrochloric acid and transfer the contents to the conical flask containing the potassium dichromate solution. And 
And after performing that, we now add one spatula of your potassium iodide powder to the same conical flask. And as you can see, this actually uh, turned the solution into uh, a different color, which is brown. So we have a question here. What is the normality of your potassium dichromate solution taken? So earlier, we uh, step 2, I believe, na determine natin yan to be 0 0.025. So click on next. And titrate the sample against um, sodium thiosulfate. Add 2 ml of starch when the color of the solution changes to pale yellow. Then continue the titration till blue color becomes colorless. So open this particular knob to let the liquid run into the conical flask. And we wait for the solution to turn into pale yellow. Pag pale yellow na siya, of course, you stop. And you add 1 ml of this particular starch solution. Once the starch is added, you can see that the solution is already turning blue. Pag blue na siya, you turn on the knob again. And of course, you wait for the solution to become colorless. So it says your solution color turns blank after adding the starch. So it turned blue earlier. So just click on next and now we determine the normality of your sodium thiosulfate solution. So um, how do we calculate for the normality of your sodium thiosulfate solution? You could just click on this formula. So you have there N1 times V1 is equal to N2 times V2, wherein N1 will represent the normality of your sodium thiosulfate solution. V1 is the volume, N2 is the normality of the potassium dichromate solution, and V2 will uh, indicate the volume of the potassium dichromate solution. So, ang gusto natin malaman is C N1. So, N1, V1 is equal to N2, V2. Very easy lang naman siya since the normality of your potassium dichromate solution is given as 0 0.025. Yung volume is 10 ml. And then the volume of the sodium thiosulfate solution which is V1 is 10.1. So madali na lang siya, di ba? Kasi meron ka ng V1, may N2 ka na, may V2 ka na. Hanapin mo na lang si N sub 1. So calculating for N sub 1. So that will be 0 0.025 times 10 divided by 10.1. So around 0 0.025. Halos pareho lang sila. So 0 0.025. And of course, para sigurado, you click on check. There. Diba? Tama na yung sagot. 0 0.025. And after standardizing your sodium thiosulfate solution, we are to determine now the dissolved oxygen content of a certain water sample. So you have here the BOD bottle. This is your water sample. Ito transfer lang natin yung amount ng uh, water sample dun sa BOD bottle. Of course, after doing that, you uh, return the caps of the um, bottles and it says here which of the following indicator is used during the titration. Ang ginamit lang naman natin indicator is yung starch. Immediately add 2 ml of your manganese sulfate solution to the BOD bottle by inserting the automatic pipette just below the surface of the liquid. So 
So, lalagyan lang po natin yung ating water sample ng 2 ml of your manganese sulfate solution. And after doing that, we click on next. This time naman ang i-add natin ay 2 ml of your alkali iodide azide reagent. So, care should be taken to avoid the bubbles in the BOD bottle. Um, it's very important kasi na whenever you are trying then to handle your sample, dapat po wala siyang bubbles. Why? Uh, kasi po, di ba, with the theoretical discussion that we had before, uh, very the one of the things that introduces oxygen to your water is when it is running as a rivers and the like. So, pag nagbabubbles po yung sample nyo, ibig sabihin, nag introduce ka ng oxygen dun, ng oxygen dun sa sample. And, pag nag introduce ka ng oxygen dun sa sample, of course, yung dissolved oxygen na makakalculate mo, hindi na po siya accurate. So, it's very important that you do not introduce oxygen to the water sample, kaya po, you prevent the bubbles from happening. Kaya it's um kaya dapat careful ka whenever you try to add reagents to the water sample. And you even in the mixing, so you mix the sample by inverting the BOT bottle several times and allow the precipitate to settle down at the bottom. So even nga po sa pag invert mo dapat uh, kaya dapat very close at uh, parang kumbaga full yung yung BOD sample para kahit i-shake mo siya or invert mo siya wala pong bubbles dun sa loob and allow the precipitate to settle down for a few minutes so i-allow natin na mag magkaroon ng precipitation and once the precipitation is complete You now add 2 ml of your concentrated sulfuric acid. So, nagbago na naman yung color ng ating sample. And then again, you uh, mix the sample. Hanggang sa ma-dissolve yung precipitate. Once that is complete, you transfer 200 ml of the sample in a conical flask. And of course, yun na po yung itatitrate ulit natin. So, fill out this particular burette this time with your sodium thiosulfate solution. You fill it until you reach the zero mark. Once it's done, of course, we click on next and titrate the sample that we have. So, ayun na. Ito po yung water sample natin. Ito yung sodium thiosulfate solution. Open the knob to start the liquid running into the conical flask. So, we are to titrate this hanggang sa yung solution ay maging pale yellow. Close the knob when the solution turns into yellow, pale yellow. So, pale yellow na siya. 
and you add 1 ml of your starch solution. Adding that starch solution will turn the um, sample into blue. And then, of course, we continue with the titration until the solution becomes colorless. Once it's colorless, we take the final reading on the burette, which is, as we have here, 3.6 ml. Then we click on Next. And of course, we now calculate the dissolved oxygen content of the water by using this formula that we have. So you have here the normality of the sodium thiosulfate solution multiplied by the volume that we used, multiplied by 8,000, divided by the volume of the sample. So ito na po yung uh, formula to um, solve for your uh, solve for your dissolved oxygen content. Yung normality of sodium thiosulfate solution is the one that we have calculated nung uh, sa unang part, ba? Yung 0 0.025 na na-calculate natin. The volume of the sodium thiosulfate solution is 3.6 and of course the volume of the sample that we had here is 201 ml. So, yung makukuha niyong sagot is already in terms of milligrams per liter. So, that's it. Uh, you just have a few questions here na pwede niyo namang sagutan or hindi. Uh, we have here, what is the acceptable range of dissolved oxygen in drinking water? Nasa theoretical discussion po to, That's 4.5 milligrams per liter to 7 milligrams per liter. Of course, that's actually the end of the simulation activity. So, uh, please do this on your own and uh, click on uh, the PDF file in the announcement tab para yun po, dun yun po ilalagay yung mga values na nakuha po ninyo. Okay? So, that's it for this particular video. Stay home, stay healthy, and stay safe. Goodbye, everyone!